baloney. The whole thing always gets back to drugs. Hello, my name is Sandro Grassa and I'm a licensed acupuncturist. Over the last few weeks, you've seen some of the videos that we released with a full interview with Matthew Bauer, president of the Acupuncture Now Foundation. So we still have a few clips from that to uh, release and to show you. And as you've seen from their website as well, I'll leave the link down here. It's acunow.org. The trailer has been released and the first screening of the full movie is going to be this weekend, April 7th. And I'll leave the details here, but sure, you can also go on the website and have a look and see, are you in, um, I think it's Midwest America, it will be easy for you to go there, because Matthew's going to be there, and so will the director, Doug Dirth, is going to be there too. So that's an amazing opportunity to um, not only get to see the full documentary, but also having the the chance of the, the Q&A with these guys. So make the most of the opportunity, and please, one big thing is, can you help the Acupuncture Now Foundation to continue the series? So this is only the first series of um, getting to the point, and it's an amazing. I've seen I've seen the, the the full feature, and it's absolutely amazing. It is it is emotional at times. We talked about this on the video already, and it really really brings it home. And also what the ANF are looking for is any practitioners that know of other practitioners or that actually already work in hospital settings or with, you know, integration in some way to get in touch with them. So go to the website, check it out. You can watch the, um, you can watch the trailer. It's available now. You can go on the um, ANF's uh, YouTube channel. But also, if you want to watch the full documentary, this one about the Children's Hospital in, in Orange County, you can do so. You can do so by donating, and then you get access to uh, watching the uh, the full-length um, feature. And look, I can't stress it enough. It's really, really important that we all keep helping the uh, the Acupuncture Now Foundation to continue with this project. Doug Dirth does an amazing job, and please just go to the website and check it out. And I, I'm, I can assure you, you will not regret it because the first episode with the kids, it's just absolutely amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. And again, thank you, Matthew, for giving me the opportunity to, um, to, to watch it firsthand. So as I said, there's more from the interview with Matthew Bauer. And if you haven't seen the previous two um, AccuVlogs that we released, I'll leave the link up here and you can go and check it out. And we're going to take it from where we left the last AccuVlog and I'll pass it on to Matthew Bauer. Hmm. And, and from, from the other aspect of, of, you know, not just the public and the patients, one of the first things I mentioned to you was I was, I was so surprised from actually hearing it and, and seeing it on camera, the neurosurgeon himself right. saying saying yes. that you know even mentioned that you know a lot of the times he spends hours looking at one little cubic centimeter of the person and he's in total control in the, in the, in the operation room and he's, he knows what he's doing he knows how to do it but it's only part of the person and him actually acknowledging that the gaps that he could see in his own in, in his own setting where that at times he wouldn't know how the patient then is recovering, how the patient is doing, who's looking after the healthcare of that patient, and then actually acknowledging that in, in his search and looking for different things, and, and always he actually mentioned always coming back to TCM and acupuncture, yeah. was yeah. that he realized, you know, him realizing that, yeah, I'm looking at the one tiny little part of the patient, and he's really good at it, and it's needed, you know, Absolutely. we all know that. That's... But, that, he, he wasn't that, taking in consideration the whole as, as right. the patient leaves the theater room and then what happens to the patient. And TCM would always look right. at the patient as the whole. I, I thought that was brilliant to have it on camera. It, it, it was brilliant, and he's brilliant. Uh, Dr. Loudon, Dr. William Loudon, I mean, not only is, am I saying he's brilliant because he recognized that Chinese medicine could fill those gaps mm. and Chinese medicine ha is bound to look at the whole patient and how the whole patient is doing. And that's, that's what's really needed uh, to, to fill those gaps in modern medical care. He's not only brilliant for that, no, he's a brilliant neurosurgeon. Mm. <laughs> I mean, he is, he is a, a, a top flight uh, neurosurgeon. So he knows Western medicine uh, backward and forward. Uh, and he is saying that Yes, as a as a neurosurgeon, I am I have to be zeroed in on this piece of this patient to do that that job well, and of course it's a critical, literally life saving job. Yeah. Um, 
But then he looked at what happened to these patients because most of these patients that he sees, like the cancer patients, it's not just about the surgery. Mm. They're going to be followed up with, with months and months and months of chemotherapy. They're going to be in and out of the hospital many, many times. You know, they might have radiation. They might, you know, it's, it's, it's this incredibly long process. And what he was saying is he would, you know, then when he would follow up and he would see a lot of these kids and realize that they were really struggling in a lot of quality of life issues. And he was like looking at what could I do to help my patients do that much better. Mm -hmm. And he started, you know, looking at all different alternatives and he just kept coming back to uh, China, traditional Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. He just realized he felt that was, that was the system that was the, the most complementary to, you know, like I, I wrote a book years ago called The Healing Power of Acupressure and Acupuncture. And I talked about these two different uh, styles of, of, of healthcare. Uh, one that tries to fix the body from the outside in like a mechanic fixing a machine mm-hmm. and the other that helps the body to better heal itself. Uh, and that's what acupuncture and most of Chinese medicine is about. Mm-hmm. And what I was saying is that the two have strengths and weaknesses that are the exact mirror opposites of each other. The strength of one is the weakness of the other. That's why they perfectly complement each other. And that's exactly what Dr. Loudon says is, you know, they, the, the strengths of one and the weakness of the other perfectly complement each other. And it's, it is amazing to hear uh, a, a, a neurosurgeon who, who is so focused on that mechanical fix type of approach and, and what Western medicine is so amazing at uh, to have, you know, realized uh, that traditional Chinese medicine offers the best system to uh, shore up the weaknesses uh, of, of the mechanical system. Yeah. And, and, and you know, you were saying about him being a brilliant neurosurgeon, of course, because he's looking after the patients and, and by going out of his own way to actually look for something else, that right. it's not even in the operation theater anymore. It's beyond him and going, you know what, I'm going to go and do more than just the standard. Right. That there alone, you know, shows care for the patients. And isn't it, isn't it so much better? Like I know you're passionate about the profession and I, I really love to do as much as I can. Isn't it so much better to be talking about this than to be talking about the skeptics? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, this is, you know, uh, this is where you go from, you know, the, the theoretical from 30,000 feet in the air to the ground level of what actually happens to real people. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, it, it just, um, w- w- that, and this is what we need to get out there. We need to get much more of this out there. Again, my philosophy has always been that the, the, the best thing we have going for us, which we haven't been tapping into, we haven't been utilizing, is get the people that are grateful for the help that they got from this because in the West, Sandro, just like in, in, in you know, in this hospital, um, it's a rarity. You know, yeah. it's it's extremely rare that uh, that any hospital would have these type of services, especially as you learn in the film, to the degree that this hospital has with with Ruth, that she can work on any floor, any doctor, on any floor of this hospital can push a button on their computer and order Chinese medicine services for their patient, and they do. And uh, so uh, that that's extremely rare. And so the 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 thing is, um, you know, so many people don't realize this, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, we haven't been really focused on trying to let those patients, the gratitude of the people that we've helped, to to give them a megaphone, give them a spotlight. And, and let them tell the story because that's what medicine is. You know, all, all the theoretical stuff, all the, you know, the, the research and all of this, that is the means to the end. That's trying to learn what works so we can put it into action in the real world on real uh, living beings. And I, I even hate to say people because it, we're talking about animal, animals too, for that matter, yeah, you know, yeah. veterinary acupuncture and everything. But uh, the, 
all of the theory stuff is supposed to lead us to safe and effective practice. Well, we already know we have safe and effective practice with this, with this healthcare. I mean, that's, that's where this excels is in its benefit to harm ratio in the real world. So what we wanna do is really spotlight uh, how it's being done in the real world and let the real people that are being helped by it, let them carry that message. Yeah, because they, they will be the ones, you, you, have, you have that two-way really, because they will be the ones telling everyone, look at what this has done for either me or someone in my family, someone close to me. But you're also, you, you can see, I, I could see it from watching it, that you could also have the other side of the, the other neurosurgeon watching this and going, well, that guy was doing that there. Maybe I, maybe I should approach my own hospital and try and do it here too. That's right. Yes, that, that's the whole point. And we don't, you know, we're not, uh, we're, we're not beating it over the head there. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, we're not, uh, the, you know, the, the one thing about this project is that, um, you know, I, I let Doug Durth, the filmmaker, know from the beginning, even though I, I'm involved with, with every aspect of it, uh, especially uh, uh, figuring out which kinds of, of types of stories we want to go after, like the children's hospital or, you know, other sorts of things we want to do. And, uh, but I let Doug know that, uh, especially since uh, he was, doing it at such a bargain price and was going so overboard that I was not going to be the executive producer trying to tell him what to do that, you know, I want him to tell the story as he sees it. Right. And uh, he's just got a, a great sense about that. And, and he's, you know, yes, he believes in acupuncture and everything, but he's coming at it from his own personal experience about what happened with his brother. And, mm. and, and frankly, what he's seen in the acupuncture community to some degree struggling, you know, to gain traction. Um, but that's not, if, if, if we benefit from that, if we start, you know, seeing more patients or getting jobs in hospitals and everything like that, that's not going to personally benefit him, yeah. you know, so he, he's, he's not doing it from that perspective. And that's exactly what I wanted uh, the, this film project to be about in this, this series now. Of, uh, of short documentaries. And, and we're actually, we, we did talk about this for very early on when we were trying to raise the film. We originally wanted to do a feature length documentary, right. which, would, which would have four or five different segments kind of woven together. And the children's hospital was gonna be one of those segments. But we, we discussed it pretty early and, uh, and Doug pointed out to me very correctly so that you know, hey, if we can only raise the money to do one at a time, that that actually might even be a, a better thing. Because, and this is what we're trying to get set up to do now. I hope that with the release of this uh, film, uh, this first episode, that people will really see, no, this is something important that we have to keep going because we've got other episodes lined up. And so with doing it this way, we could come out with a new episode every six to nine to 12 months, mainly depending on the funding, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, how, much, how long it takes us to, to raise the money to, to, to get out there. So, you know, just imagine uh, with uh, when, and, and I hate to keep teasing people about this film, but when you see it, just, you know, you can, you can imagine, Sandro, if we come out with something of this quality or this quality or even above uh, with more, more, little more resources we can have even better production values but if you just think about that we're going to come out with like a 30 minute documentary uh, of this caliber you know maybe every nine months you know and and do at least four or five six of these segments the the hope is even if we get a second one produced that we believe we're we're quite confident that we can um we will we will be able to get picked up by like a Netflix or an Amazon Prime or Discovery Channel or some kind of major distributor. Mm -hmm. uh, we 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 believe the quality is actually there and the human stories are, are actually yeah. absolutely there. That, that's what I said to you. Yeah, from from the start that it was that value that that 
you, 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 could, you could relate to the story and you were involved in the story. So you could, you could imagine that other people, there's so many people out there, you know, unfortunately touched by cancer. So you can imagine how they would feel the connection and want to know more about the, about the story. Right, and we, and, and something I don't think I let you know, and this was quite recent, but we did submit this film to a foundation called the Dove Foundation. Uh, and they review films uh, to give ratings because they're, they're actually a Christian organization, pretty conservative organization, and, and they give more detailed ratings towards, you know, for their types of uh, audiences and things about, you know, uh, content about violence and sexual content and everything. Mm -hmm. So we submitted this documentary to them, and we've got a, a very glowing, beautiful review. They were, they were, quite literally blown away by it mm. and and uh and even say that you know that that Doug did an amazing job of telling all of these stories compacted into 30 minutes yeah. and uh so you know this this is a real indication of what the general public will how they'll react to this mm -hmm. so uh, we're we're very pleased with that because especially you know, as you, I don't, I'm not sure how it goes outside the U.S., but, you know, in the U.S., there are some, you know, Christian communities that think acupuncture is, you know, is against their values or something for some strange reason. Yeah. I think it's because of chi is energy or spirit or something yeah. like that. But, you know, to have a, a, a Christian organization like the Dove Foundation to give, you know, highest ratings yeah. um, for all audiences and, uh, everything is is a great sign for us yeah. about um, how this is going to be received in the general public. So you know we need the acupuncture community to really light that fire, you know, yeah. to get it start to get it spread out there. Yeah. But we believe once we do start to get uh, penetration, I mean we we have been building a database of cancer support groups, and we're we're still working on exactly the strategy we're going to do. But we hope to. You know, we, we, we plan to connect with as many of these groups as possible to say, you should, you should let your members see this or, you know, in, in encourage them to see this, give them the information about how they can view this, because uh, this could really be a benefit to the people you service. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we hope we're going to get a, a real ball rolling between these types of organizations, okay. these patient groups, because that is... That is our end audience. You know, we, we're preaching to the choir with acupuncturists, uh, but we're doing that to for for to to help us launch to the, the general public, yeah. and uh, that that's why it's so important that we we get the support from you know from our choir to uh, to help us spread the word out to the entire congregation. How's that? <laughs> Oh, baloney. The whole thing always gets back to drugs.